Welcome to what's going to be a pretty special video. In front of me, I have the chessboard. This is a smart chessboard. And I know a lot of you aren't used to the third dimension, but these are physical chess pieces. And this is historically how chess has been played over the board. But up until recently, we've only seen like dumb wooden chess boards. But there's a lot of underlying technology with this board. And the coolest thing is when you touch a piece, you don't even have to touch it hard. You just like tap it. It will show the legal moves for your side. There's actually a lot of, uh, lot of features with this. There's different assistance modes to get um, the best moves. The squares will light up different colors to show uh, what the best moves are. Um, but in this video, I'm going to try out a new feature that was recently added in beta to the ChessUp app. And I'm going to try to play against an online opponent on chess.com. Now, this has been possible uh, for Lee Chess, but um, I'm excited to get another game on my speedrun account. And if you saw my previous video, you'll know that I recently set up an account for a speedrun, but I need to play a certain number of games to get an established rating before I can actually start the speedrun. So I figured, why not? kill a couple birds with one stone or maybe one pawn and um, and yeah, play a game on this board, try it out, and hopefully uh, punish some beginner mistakes. Do I dare play spell chess on this? I don't think so. Uh, let's, let's play a normal game. So I will hit play and I am playing Hamed Matin 7 something. Uh, my speed run rating is 1183. I'm white. Let's waste no more time. And I will play my first move, Fawn E4. And I don't have to look at the app, uh, actually, because the, the opponent's moves will light up. I just have to make the, the moves for the opponent. Let's play Knight F3. Uh, we're going to stick with very basic opening principles. Won't do anything too fancy. We see classic Knight C6. And I think what I'll do is play a Ponziani, because why not? One of the best beginner-friendly openings can also be effective at higher levels. Um, D6 is already a slight inaccuracy, because it, it locks in this bishop. Uh, and I'll go ahead and play D4, taking over the center. Now, I do want to note that when you're playing an online opponent, there's no assistance mode available. So I can't like cheat and uh, and see what the best moves are with, uh, with the board. Um, all I can see is illegal moves. So when I touch the queen, all the squares, all the legal squares will light up where the queen can move. Um, I should also note this is not touch move. Even though I touch the queen, I don't have to move it. The rules might be different in uh, interments, so do be aware. Uh, okay, opponent pins me on f3. But do I care? Let's just develop. Let's play bishop c4. There might be some cases where I'll have to accept double pawns on the king side. But um, yeah, we see takes. Now oh, I can't take with knight. I want to do some tactics against f7. Like, I'm considering queen b3 here. But, yeah, queen b3, queen d7. I think it's way more simple just to take the pawn. And this is usually the goal, Ponziani. Get two pawns in the center. Have very fluid development for the rest of the pieces. You see knight f6 attacking my e4 pawn. So, I think I'll just defend knight c3, simple enough. Trying to be very efficient with the development of the minor pieces. Note that every single minor piece, I've only moved once so far, finding, trying to find the ideal squares. We do see takes. And this is an interesting moment because if I take with the queen, then this d-pawn will hang. If I take with a pawn, I have double pawns, but I'm going for this. I actually played a game on the same account uh, not too long ago 
that featured the strength of having double pawns. And we might see another example of how double pawns can be very strong. Um, even though sometimes uh, they have a reputation of being weak, I think there might be two reasons here why they can be a strength. Uh, for one, this pawn on f3 reinforces a pawn on e4. And secondly, I have the g-file, which I don't know if I'll be able to use so soon. But maybe, maybe queen b3? Queen b3 is one of these moves. It looks like a, a simple tactic to win a pawn. But I don't think it's so simple. Like queen b3. Now I can't draw arrows, but I can point. Queen b3, queen g7. Take the pawn, rook b8. I don't want to be too materialistic. I'm going to go for a different plan. I'm going to play queen d2. I like my queen staying in the center. d4 is now still very well defended. And I'm setting up the battery between my queen and my bishop, which could come into to use very soon. And because I haven't committed casting kingside, I'm not going to castle kingside. I'm going to start pushing my h pawn. It's time to attack. I have the center. I have a rook still on h1. But this will be super interesting because black's kingside formation is very solid. Um, it might be hard to crack immediately. We see a6. Yeah, a6, it's the type of move that signifies maybe black doesn't quite know what to do. Hmm. And maybe black wants to play b5. I think I'm okay allowing b5, though. Now I, I think it's time to castle. So I'm realizing the one piece that really wants to get into play is this rook. Uh, this rook wants to come to g1 eventually. Uh, but first things first, let's save the bishop. And bishop d5 is interesting. Bishop b3. I think I'll play bishop b3. To keep an eye on my time. Still over five minutes. Still got some tea in my cup. Knight d7. Okay, so this unleashes a bishop, maybe trying to maneuver the knight to the queen side. But with knight d7, the knight's going away from helping defend the black king. Now, yeah, I'm going to continue with attack. Got my pawn, got my rook, h file, got the bishop. This bishop's going to be very key. Bishop is currently pinning this pawn on f7. Wow, opponent takes the pawn. Not sure if that's a brave move or a, a reckless move. The very fine line between bravery and recklessness. I'm considering playing rook dg1, but... Maybe I will. Rook dg1, simply pinning the bishop. And later I can I can take the pawn if I want. There's something special about playing an over-the-board game and just getting a, a very strong attack. <laughs> There's more satisfaction OTV compared to online. Okay, so we see pawn h4. Opponent's saving the pawn. Now bishop h6. I'm going to show no mercy. Now we really see the strength of having the that open g-file for the rook. Like imagine my pawn were still on g2, and then it'd be much harder to orchestrate any sort of attack. 
when it's taking a think here, but yeah, there's not too many ways to even try and defend the bishop. Like maybe we'll see queen f6. And so far, this um, this has been pretty smooth. Uh, the board is like super responsive. Uh, there's really not much lag. Maybe there's a small pause between opponent making the move and it lighting up on the board. But yeah, nothing too bad. And now if I want, I can take the bishop. Yeah, let's take the bishop. Taking with my bishop. I'm expecting queen takes bishop. If black tries to save the queen, then I might be much closer. <laughs> I might be mating much sooner. Oh, queen takes f3. Okay. Looking for the quickest mate here. Yeah, bishop... Bishop e5, how about? Now there's three legal moves for black. But there's no legal moves with the black king. <laughs> the three legal moves are as we see with this queen. <laughs> queen uh, queen g4, queen g3, or queen g2. And I, I do hope there is like a lot of educational value that can be taken from this game. We saw a very classic position that can come from Ponziani, where got the center. It seemed like black had an opening victory with doubling my pawns, but um, yeah, really suffered the consequences in the early middle game. So as my opponent, oh, my opponent disconnected. Will auto resign? Uh, it's cut off here, but auto resigns in about 10 seconds. I will also say, because I'm on my speedrun account, anyone who I beat from this account will get their rating refunded. So uh, I feel a little bit bad for my opponents, but the game is over. And yeah, I won by abandonment. Can I show what will happen? Queen g3. I was, gonna, I was not going to take the queen. I was going to play queen g5. Check. Forcing queen takes g5. And then rook takes g5 checkmate. And then we then we get the, the cool lighting effects. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Uh, again, links below if you want to check out Chess Up and get a board for yourself. Let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the next video.